Okay, so in the last video, I just showed you the easiest thing to create in vector.com with the pen tool, which is something that's all straight edges. And so I just made the beak. But notice, whenever you make a path, it will have the properties of fills and of borders on it. And then of shadow too. And shadow is something that is unique to vector.com that Illustrator doesn't have. It, it kind of immediately gives you a drop shadow to play with. But so just don't even worry about shadows. I'm going to turn off the border. I can make it smaller. I can make it bigger. But notice, unlike doing a stroke as a layer style in, in PhotoP, where you can choose for the stroke to be on the outside of the selection or on the inside or at the center, strokes within vector programs or what they call borders here in um, vector.com are always going to grow from the center. So it's a problem because as it grows, notice how it something that's very simple and just has defined points, those points get blunted by the width of the stroke. So for that reason, we are never going to use borders for our logo project. We're just going to turn that off. And instead, we're always going to use fills. Okay, now I want to show you how we can make a curve, right? And there's a few ways. But I'm going to show you again with the most direct tool. That's the pen tool. I'm going to click here. And then I'm going to go to the next place where I think one curve can, can bridge that gap between the two. And then I'm going to start pulling on it. Click and pull. And that will turn it into a curve. I need to actually zoom out a little bit. And then scroll up. You can, same as Photo P, you can use spacebar to get the hand tool to move. You can do Command minus to zoom out, Command plus to zoom in. But I need enough room for this handle. And then I'm going to try to get the curve. This is a little bit too much of a curve to get in one. But I'm going to show you what I can do about that. Then I'm going to go back to the beginning. And so now I have another closed path. If I use the home button, whoop, not the home button, sorry. Let me open it back up. There we go. And if I double click on it, it will show me my anchor points. And within each point, within each anchor point, it's also going to show me what's called a rounding option. And what a rounding option does is it will create a curve based on that anchor point. I can also add more anchor points just by clicking on the path and then dragging. And what's nice about that is once you've started a curve, if you add an anchor point to the curve, it will automatically generate it on the curve. So it's a nice way to get a nice even curve. I know it's complicated. You have to play with it for yourself. But let me continue. So for instance, I can add an anchor point. I can add an anchor point and then bring it around. And then I can play with these little handles and try to make it work. Now notice, as I bend these handles, though, you see how they always go together. They're always lined up, and they always go the same distance apart from each other. That's to even out your curve on both sides. But if you hold down Command, then you can isolate one side of the curve versus the other. And this is essential for complex shapes. Holding down command while you adjust the curves. So if I do that, I can get these exact shapes that I want on all sides. No matter how complicated. And I can always hit Command Z if it goes wrong. And now I'm going to click on Layers. And now I see I have two paths. Oops, I don't want to be on the Pin tool anymore. Or I don't want to add to the path anymore. So I can always see the properties. 
So let me go to the vector tool. Let me go up here, double click on it. And then I always have these properties. So I want to turn on the fill and turn off the border. And now I have two paths in my layers. One that's made of curves, one that's made of straights. Now let's see if I can use the pin tool and do a lot more all at once. So this time when I click, this is with the pin tool, when I click at the end of something, I'm going to drag so I get that curve. I'm going to hit Command minus. I can do that while I'm still selecting. I can still use the space bar too. Get that curve. Now I'm going to go back and click on it. And then I can start again with the pin tool, clicking on it, clicking, clicking on it, clicking, clicking. And you see that once you do a curve, it naturally wants to go back into a curve. And you can't stop that except by clicking on the anchor point. But then you can pick it right back up by clicking on the anchor point. So this is what I recommend. Click on that anchor point. So you break it. Come on. Sometimes you just have to click on another tool. And then you can go back. and just double click so you can see your anchor points. And then you can click on them. And then you can hold down command and you can bend your curves out. And sometimes you want them curved and sometimes you want them straight. Whoops, command J. So that's why these vector programs are not very intuitive but they give you the potential to always edit your points. You can move them. You can always build a curve into them just by double clicking if they're straight. And then if you hold down command, you can make one half of the curve straight and one half curved. You can add anchor points. You can delete anchor points just by clicking on them. If there are too many. I think you need to be maybe on the pen tool. Nope. And they're always trying to change this. You can drag one anchor point into another. I'm trying to get rid of one. Oh, you just hit delete. So you, so you select it and then you can hit delete. They've made a slight change there. And you can also always round them out at the corner. Though I try not to use that rounding tool too much because it's a little harder to control. But if you hold down command while you play with the handles, you can change the directions of these curves, which is very, very helpful. So I can delete anchor points and I can add to them. And I can drop it and then pick it up anytime as long as I know where I left off. Because the end goal is a closed path. And I'll often do that just by double clicking so I see all the anchors. Or sometimes you just have to close your path. Ah, stop. <laughs> So shift command Z is redo, command Z is undo. Now here is kind of a, a pro tip for dealing with this frustration of trying to get your curves and your straights all while you're doing it. At some point you can just let that go. 
and you do your curves when they're easy to do, and you hold down command, and you drag it back. And then you go to your next point, and you set your curve when you need a curve. And you zoom out when you need to zoom out, and you use the space bar to pivot, move around when you need to. And then you hold down command, and then you drag the handle back, and then you're out again with a straight, and then you find your next curve. And basically, it's best, if you can, if you can manage, to always drag your curves back so that there's only one handle coming out of each anchor point for curves. And that's so you don't have two curves making any one path. And then you can always go back to one and double click on it and then hold command and adjust it on both sides. So I want it to come to a sharp point here. So I need a curve. And that's what it looks like. And now I can go back to my pen tool and I click where I left off. But it's good to kind of see it by double clicking first. And by holding down command and controlling the curves on each side. And I can always kind of move it. So what's nice about vectors, it kind of puts it all in one tool, which is this pin tool. And it's, as long as you double click and click on a point, you can always continue from there. And it's okay if you make too many paths. But the whole point of using this tool is so that you have enough control, you don't need to make too many paths. And they can always be adjusted after the fact. Hold down command, you can move the handles independent of each other. You can adjust it, get it to where you want. Especially if you're not a big fan of drawing clean curves, these tools are really, really helpful. And then to start again, you click where you left off. And honestly, the biggest pain is zooming in and out because you need enough room to move those handles. And hold down Command and click on the handles and push them back. Hold down Command, push the handle back. Decide where the next curve needs to go. Sometimes you need like an S curve, and that requires something on each side. So I might move this anchor point down, click on it, and then start back here. And you see how that's kind of curving both ways? First out, then in. So I kind of need that extra handle there. Same thing with this. I could potentially do this all with the curve on each side. And the fewer anchors, the easier it is to kind of clean it up. But it's difficult. Hold down Command. Move that down. Play with this. Whoops. Unfortunately, this sometimes happens. This is really annoying. That handle lands on another anchor point. So I have to zoom in to not accidentally hit it. And now I want to play with this curve as well. So I need it on kind of both sides. But it might just be easier to continue it and then fix it later. And sometimes people just like to use straights and then convert them to curves later. Like 